Of all the meeting platforms we've used and tried over the last couple of years during the pandemic, Zoom is the one I love the most. We all think we know everything there is to know about Zoom, but we don't. Here are seven Zoom hacks that you've probably never heard of, but you'll be really glad you now know. Number one, want to share something, but it's on your iPhone. Sometimes this happens where we've got something that's on our mobile, we want to share, but we're on the Zoom meeting on our desktop or laptop. Well, if you've got an iPhone, there is actually an easy solution for this within Zoom. You just click share screen, then you choose the iPhone or iPad AirPlay option and you follow the instructions to mirror your screen. It's very quick to do and there you go. You can share your whole iPhone screen on your Zoom call to everyone in the meeting. Number two, sometimes you might need to turn off your camera or your mic quickly. This might happen if the dog starts barking, the doorbell goes, there's an Amazon delivery, whatever it is, sometimes you just need to quickly turn it off and there is an easy shortcut for your camera and your mic. To turn your camera off on a Mac, you just use Command Shift V and to turn it off on Windows, you use Alt and V. To turn your microphone off on a Mac, you use Command and shift and A. And to turn it off on Windows, you use Alt and A. Now there is a quicker keyboard shortcut for microphones if you want to just temporarily mute yourself or unmute yourself, and that's to press and hold down the space bar. And most of us know this already, but the problem with that is you need to be holding the space bar down the whole time. You can't walk away and do something. So that's fine if you just quickly want to mute yourself or you're talking to someone in, in the room or something like that. But if you actually want to mute yourself and walk away, you better to use the full keyboard shortcuts. Number three, when you find yourself in a room with really rubbish lighting, you don't have a fancy setup, there is actually something that you can do quickly on Zoom to sort your lighting. Click video settings, then click adjust for low light and you can manually adjust to whatever looks good for you. This is so much easier than getting a whole lighting rig. It's not a miracle cure, but it can improve things a little bit. So it's worth checking out your settings. Number four, sometimes you wanna highlight a particular area of your screen that you're sharing and there's a great way to do this within Zoom. This is where you use the annotate cursor option to highlight a particular aspect of your screen that you want to show your audience. The annotate cursor option at the top bar, it gives you a few different ways that you can do this. You can spotlight the cursor, you can show an arrow, or you can use the vanishing pen and that just allows you to temporarily highlight something on the screen and the pen markings will then disappear. And the main idea of all of these is to help focus your audience's eye on a particular element of the screen. Number five, I find when people show slides on the screen on a Zoom call and their, their face disappears into the background. It's really hard to feel a connection between the audience and the speaker. Actually, there is a simple way within Zoom to keep yourself on screen in front of your slides. This is a new feature in Zoom that's in the beta phase at the moment. To do this, you click share screen, you go to the advanced tab, choose the slides as virtual background option. You'll see that you appear in front of your slides and you're able to expand, make yourself bigger and smaller. You can move yourself around to the right position. This is a really good way to build that connection with your audience, even if you choose to share slides. Number six. Often you may find that you don't didn't quite catch something that was said or you missed something. And that can be for a multitude of reasons. It could be for people with hearing issues who have poor internet connections. It may be that your mind's drifted momentarily, but there's so many reasons why people may miss elements of online meetings. And this is where using live transcripts and captions come in. To do this, you have to turn it on in advance in your Zoom desktop set settings. So you log into Zoom on your desktop, not to the app, but to the actual website. You'll go to settings and then go to end meetings advanced. You'll see the section where you can copy the API token and connect. And this is where you use a third party server, which will help you get more accurate captions. So I use Otter AI for this. It takes about five minutes to set up initially. And once it's done, it's there in all my Zoom meetings. So it will automatically start captioning and the audience has the option of turning it on and off. And it really allows that flexibility for note taking for people to stay on board with what's happening in any of your meetings. Number seven, it's pretty common that there's something going on in the background in your office or your home office where the neighbors are making noise, where there's building works going on or some drilling 
thing. Most of us don't have fancy audio setups and it's great that there is a quick solution to sort this within Zoom. So in Zoom, you go to audio settings and you go to suppress background noise and you're able to set the level yourself. This is really good for drowning out a low level buzz. If you put the noise suppression up too much, you'll start to affect your own sound quality of your microphone. So just be aware and you get the right balance for yourself. But it is a great and simple way to get rid of some low level background noise. So these are my top seven Zoom hacks that are things that you will be very glad you now know about that will make your experience of using Zoom even better. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love my video on how to make your online presentations pop, which you can see right here.